Hi there! In this first chapter of Reading 101, I am going to discuss foot pumping and a foot pumping technique that I like to call dynamic pedaling. I often hear people ask about technique and foot pumping on reed organs, and if you are one of those with that question, this short tutorial just might be for you. So you're probably wondering why I'm on a bicycle and why I'm not at a reed organ. I think both activities have a lot of similarities. For example, if I were to sing you a song while I'm here on my son's bike, I should be able to keep the same tempo and rhythm of the song no matter what gear the bike is in. When it is in the lower gear, you will have to pedal faster for you to go the same speed than when it is in a higher gear. As you drive over interesting terrain, your pedaling will vary in speed. On a reed organ, as more notes are used and stops are pulled, you will have to pedal faster just like the lower gears of a bike. As you play interesting music and expressions, your pedaling will vary in speed. Should a violinist play with the same part of the bow and always use the bow at the same speed? The notes may be correct, but combining both dynamic bowing with the notes is what makes a song into music. These same dynamics can be applied to a reed organ through the pumping. It can be challenging to apply these type of dynamics to your pedaling, especially for those who are just starting to learn to play the reed organ. For most people, it is an instinct to move our feet to a rhythm and a steady tempo. When you carefully control the pumping, you enhance the dynamics, which adds to the interest of your music. This is why I personally like to call it dynamic pedaling. Now those with inquiring minds, you may be curious to how the air assembly works. The pedals are attached to the straps, which are attached to the feeders, also known as exhausters. Each feeder has two air flap valves, one inside allowing the air to be removed out of the reservoir, and the other visible here to let the air out of the feeder. The reservoir is often found at the back of the organ, but other configurations do exist, however the concept will be the same. If your lower air assembly is in good health, when the feeders are pumped with four full strokes, the reservoir should be just about fully collapsed for many organs. The reservoir will open as the air passes the reeds. If you have to pump like crazy and it quickly opens without you playing anything, you have a problem with an air leak. This should be investigated and repaired as you could wear out your feeders, your straps, and your playing will suffer as you will not be able to use dynamic pedaling easily. Besides that, you will get all sweaty and tired. If you like this kind of cardio exercise, stick to riding a bike in low gear. Most reservoirs have a safety valve on them called a spill valve. This protects the reservoir in case you over pump it. Whenever the spill valve engages while you are playing, it is a signal that you are over pumping and you need your pedaling pace to go a little slower. If you're playing away and it gets hard to pump, it is very important to not force it. If your spill valve is not set properly or doesn't exist, you risk damaging your reservoir, your straps, and your feeders if you over deflate the reservoir. To practice pedaling, I suggest first to pull the melodious stop on the treble side and a diapason stop on the bass side always keeping it simple at first, and play a chord. Try to keep that chord sounding as quiet and as stable as you can without dying out. I want you to notice the amount of pressure you're using on the pedals. Pay close attention to that. It does not take much pressure at all and much movement. When you're playing this soft, the reservoir is going to be barely used and most of the air movement is going to be passed by the feeders with direct control of your feet, so you have to be very steady and very accurate. Make it louder by pedaling a little more and change the chord because it gets a little annoying after a while. And get soft again. And 
and just keep doing that until you get the feeling. again. Once you get the basic feeling of that, I would suggest to play some simple songs that you're familiar with. Personally, I always find that four-part hymns work nicely for this. Play it softly at the beginning of your piece, and then build it up in the middle, and let it die off again at the end. One important note about when you decrescendo, and that is, there is no breaks on the reservoir. You always have to coast to go softer. So if you have too much speed on your pedals, and you come to a softer section, you're going to blast right through it. There's no stopping it. You have to wait until the reservoir eases up, and then you can keep back in control again. It's a good thing you don't hurry, hurt yourself when you uh, crash through a pianissimo section. Once you start to master the coordination, try making your songs sing by pedaling a little more to the middle of each phrase and easing up at the end of the phrase. First I'm going to add the vox celeste and the treble and a bass coupler for the bass, keeping it simple. Play more of your favorite songs with these types of dynamics and your antique great organ is on its way to be upgraded from a mechanical piece of pretty furniture to a unique and beautiful musical instrument. On the next episode of Reading 101, I'm going to talk about registrations in combination with dynamic pedaling and the knee levers. Until then, be creative, make music, and have fun. Thanks for watching.